Welcome. My name is Beth Huffland. I'll be the moderator for today. I'm a marketing specialist here in North America, and I'm very excited to introduce today's presenter, Keegan Kinslow. So a little bit about Keegan. Keegan is the regional marketing manager responsible for intrusion sensors at Bosch here in North America. He's been with Bosch over 10 years, and he specializes in improving processes and increasing productivity by working with customers, end users, and industry professionals to meet their security needs. So Keegan, take it away. Thank you very much, Beth. Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. As Beth said, we are gonna be discussing our ceiling mount detectors, its complete lineup, and some of the technology that goes behind uh, all of our motion detectors and some of the features and benefits. So let's jump right in. So first off, Bosch has been in the motion detector industry for over 50 years. Uh, all of our detectors have you know, best, in, best in class optics uh, to provide you, the installer, our end users, all of our partners out there, you know, best kept performance, false alarm immunity, and, and really making sure that we're, we're helping to secure uh, facilities out there in, in the world. One of the technologies that's built into our motion detectors is called first step processing. And this is an instant response when somebody walks through a detection pattern of one of our motion detectors. We have the ability, again, with our high quality optics to get very good pulses, very good signals. And if you take a look at this graph at the, at the bottom of the slide here, that represents someone walking across the field of view of a motion detector. You can see that those pulses are very, very big, right? From a, a, a positive to a negative signal, that is really what disseminates an alarm from, not an alarm, some of those smaller signals. When I talk about this with customers, I typically get the, the response of, yeah, well, Keegan, it's a motion detector. It should show you all of these signals and you're not wrong, right? But where Bosch really differentiates itself, again, going back to the high quality optics, things that Bosch is known for, is when things get really difficult, when we have a, a difficult environment, that's really where our optics shine. Again, false alarm immunity and, and best in class catch performance. Another technology that's built into these detectors is called dynamic temperature compensation. And what dynamic temperature compensation allows us to do is understand and take information from the environment that the motion detector is installed in, take all of that information in and gauge what sensitivity level those motion detectors should be. Not every room in the world is 70 degrees, right? So when we talk about uh, difficult situations, more heat, things, other things going on within that environment, it can become very difficult for the motion detector to differentiate what an actual alarm is and what isn't, right? That's where false alarms come into play. One of the hardest things for a motion detector to, to do is to catch the bad guy in an environment where the temperature of that room or that environment is very close to that temperature of someone's skin. Skin temperature is right around 90 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. And what dynamic temperature compensation allows us to do is as that environment changes in temperature, whether that's up or down, we are able to change automatically, the, the motion detector automatically changes the threshold, the alarm threshold, to make sure that we're still getting accurate catch performance and we're still cutting down on false alarms. The other thing that Bosch does drastically different from the rest of the industry is once that temperature of the room gets above the human skin temperature again, 90 to 92 degrees, we actually start backing down that sensitivity. Why you ask? Well, we do that for a number, a couple of reasons. Number one, we don't want to have such high sensitivity that we're false alarming all the time. That's why we back it down. But also that difference in temperature from my skin to a hundred degree wall is large enough that the detector is still smart enough to be able to catch. Moving on to a couple other uh, parts of technology that we have in our detectors, sealed optical chambers. So this, this prevents, you know, drafts, you know, wind drafts, insects going in and burning into the, into the warm, you know, uh, head end of the, of the motion detector itself, 
we all have probably heard or seen of those, you know, free rent bugs that are coming in and taking a little vacation in the motion detector. They think it's great, but the owners, they are not very happy about it, right? Because it causes false alarms and that's not good for anybody. So that sealed optical chamber really eliminates that from the equation. All of our detectors have selectable, selectable PIR sensitivity. And if it's a microwave detector or a tri-tech detector, you can also adjust the microwave to that uh, based, on your, based on your application and your needs. And then the, the, the last piece of technology that I love to touch on is, is called microwave noise adaptive processing. Let's call it noise writing for short because that is a mouthful. So we talked about dynamic temperature compensation being able to, uh, in a smart way, adjust sensitivity based on the temperature of the room. We can do the same exact thing with our microwave technology. We all probably know that microwave can be seen through the walls. So if I have a motion detector in my office and somebody, I don't know why they would be doing this, but if somebody was driving a forklift in my bedroom, that motion detector would be able to see that microwave noise you can see through walls. So our detectors, again, are intelligent enough to learn and understand their environment so that when they see a constant microwave signal, it'll pop on and say, hey, I see microwave. And if it's constant over time, it says, hmm, okay, that's not actually an alarm. That's something, that, something else that's going on. I'm gonna move my microwave threshold up to this level to what's normal in the environment. And anything that comes in this room or anything more that I see, I can kick that up. And that's when my actual alarm happens. Now, one thing that I would I typically talk about here, guys, is, is that is only available on our tri-tech detectors. So microwave is only available on our tri-tech detectors, which is Bosch's uh, advanced version of dual tech. Tri-tech includes three technologies. PIR, passive infrared, that's the difference between uh, a, a background and a target temperature-wise. Microwave, think of Doppler radar, think of submarines and bats. I'm sending signals, they're bouncing back to me. I'm interpreting those signals, that's microwave. The third and final technology of TriTech is advanced signal processing. And advanced signal processing is an algorithm that is built into our into our boards of our motion detectors that takes all of the information from the individual sensors that are in the motions, the PIR sensor, the microwave, the white light immunity sensor, all of that information, and it makes an intelligent decision, is this an alarm or not? Again, we, go, we will always come back to best in class catch performance, false alarm immunity, and for our installation friends, I'm gonna tell you some stuff about these motion detectors that will make your lives in installing these things much easier. So with that, let's dive into the actual detectors themselves. We're split screen here, gang, so you can see my PowerPoint and I will also show you the detectors in my hands, I'll pull them apart. But for a brief overview on our uh, ceiling mount PIR detectors, we have the DS936, and then the DS936B, don't worry. They're the same exact product, just different color. 936 standard is just the white color. 936B is the black. Very nice for restaurants that have painted ceilings. Um, this is a very, very low profile detector. You can see it in my hand. It's about the size of my finger. Very low footprint. Uh, 24 foot coverage pattern and a very flexible mounting height from seven to 12 feet. Again, we have adjustable sensitivity settings. But the one thing that I like to talk about with this detector, folks, is the, the, the different ways that we can actually mount this thing. So you can flush mount it or you can recess mount it. It can be mounted to a, a, a regular electrical ceiling mount box or, a, or an octagonal box. And it also can be surface mounted. So if I wanted to just stick this on the ceiling or drop tile ceiling, no problem, you can do that. To be able to do it recess mounted, I just want to show you what the what the footprint drop, drops down to. Take a look at that, folks. The footprint on these detectors is just unbelievable. They're very, very small, really, really good uh, catch performance there. And the other part of this is it is at a very, very competitive price point. So that's the DS936. 
Now we'll jump over to uh, our cream of the crop sealing detector in the DS9370 and the DS9371. Again, don't worry, folks. The only difference between these detectors is the color. Same exact thing, just different colors. Again, if you have uh, you know, painted ceilings, these black ones blend right in. Um, but the DS9370 detector is one I have here. This is our most commercialized detector that we have in our portfolio today. 46 foot coverage pattern, very flexible mounting height. You'll see these in retail. You'll see them in restaurants with tall ceilings, but we can mount these things from eight to 20 feet. Fully adjustable optics. This is something that I'll show you real quick when I open this thing up. The one other, the, the other couple of things that I will mention to, to the group is that we really took the installer in mind when we, we developed this product. The DS9370 has a hinge chassis and a base plate so that you don't have to have, you know, three arms to mount this thing. It comes completely together or completely apart. I bring my wire in through here. I can actually pipe mount this too if I wanted to and need to suspend it a little bit. But all of this can be done with two hands. So I hold my base plate up this way. I'm able to screw up uh, or screw in the, the plate itself to the ceiling. And then once I'm completely done with, with my, my terminals here, I close that thing back up and we're ready to rock and roll. Take a look a, a little bit of the, the 9370 itself. So I mentioned the fully adjustable optics. Good news, folks. If you can read uppercase letters, you'll know exactly where to put these, these optics, these PIR optics. So there's actually a graph in there that will give you letters based on the mounting height that you have this detector. And if you needed to change it for any reason, I simply just turn them and it will, it will, it will raise or lower this PIR uh, sensor with just the, the turn of a switch. You have all your terminal switch, all your terminal strips here, you have your tamper switch, and then again, you have uh, some jumpers for your high and low sensitivity. And then again, that thing goes right together. I'm able to stick a screw in there, continue the security there from, from a motion detector. The only other thing that I wanna mention here, gang, is this 360 LED light pipe that you'll see here. Once you get this thing installed and you start doing your walk tests and you're, you're testing this thing out, when that's mounted 20 feet up in the air, you can see when you hit that coverage pattern, the moment you do, you can see this thing light up from anywhere, any angle on this, on this motion detector. It makes the walk test process so easy. Customers love it. And we have gotten some just tremendous feedback with it. That's the DS9370 and 9371. And then last but not least, we have the DS939. Now I'm not gonna go through this entire uh, slide here, folks, because it's basically the same thing as the DS9370. The only difference here is, yeah, you get a little bit more coverage pattern, but this is a PIR only detector. And why we have this, some of our customers require PIR only, specifically, you know, government customers, they require PIR only, one technology, that's why we have the DS939, but it's the same exact mechanics, same exact internals outside of just being a PIR uh, only standalone detector. And with that, that is our, our lineup for motion detectors as it sits today. We're really, really excited about some things coming up in the future. Um, but with that, I would urge anybody that's out there today that, that if you have a question, you wanna talk about motion detectors, you want to test some some ceiling mount detectors? Give me a give me a call. Send me an email. Let's have a conversation. I'm here to support you guys, and I'm really looking forward to meeting you in person. Thank you very much, Beth. I'll hand it back over to you. Great, thank you, Keegan. So thank you everyone for viewing this tech talk with us today. It was some great information, Keegan. Um, I really enjoyed the the real motions um, that you had in your hand. It was great to see the components. Um, everyone, please, if you'd like to learn more about any of our Bosch products or, you know, any Bosch or industry news, please follow us on our channels. Um, we do have the Bosch Security and Safety LinkedIn page. There's also the Bosch Building Technologies website, and we're also on YouTube. Thank you so much.